Hello. In this video, I'm going to be explaining post-processor files, what they are, why do we need them, and where to get them from to use with Fusion 360. Post-processor files, commonly just called post-processors, or simply posts, are what convert the generic toolpath information into an NC code format that the machines can understand. When we program a toolpath inside of Fusion 360, or any other CAM software, we are defining information such as the position of the tool, which tool to use, and many other aspects. But each of the machines interpret this information in a different format. A post-processor file is used to take this generic information, pass it through the post-processor, and convert it into the NC code format that each particular machine will be able to use. So, why does each machine need a different NC code format? Why can't they all just take the generic toolpath information directly out of Fusion 360 or any other CAM software? As well as many different machine makes and models, there are also many different types of the machine controller. The machine controller can be thought of as the operating system of the machines, similar to an operating system on a computer or on a mobile phone. Each of these controllers uses its own language and interprets information, in other words, the NC code, in a different format. Some machine manufacturers will allow you to select the control that you have on a machine. For example, here in the Birmingham Technology Center, we have one DMG machine which uses a Siemens controller and one DMG which uses a Heidenheim controller. Other machines come with a standard control. Again, here in the technology center, our HAS has a HAS controller, as all HAS machines do. Again, each of these control types has its own language and interprets the NC code in a different way, meaning that we need to output the NC from Fusion 360 to a match. A further reason why we need post-processors is that even within a machine controller type, the machines themselves will vary, and we need the post to reflect this. This may include things such as the kinematics of the machine, so whether it has rotational axes, and if so, whether it is a head-head or a table-table type machine. This can also include things such as the axis limits, to make sure that we are not trying to move the tool or the machine to a position which it can't reach. It may also need to include things such as particular settings which may be installed or activated on the control. This means that even if we have two machines, the same make and model, you may still need two different post processors, one for each. Because of all of this, it is very important to have a post processor which is correctly set up for the particular machine that is going to be used with. So, where can you get the correct post processor file from? For Fusion 360, all posts are available for free and can either be selected from the list of installed posts or you can download the one you need from the online post library. On here, there are hundreds of post files available. You simply need to search for the controller or machine you have and download the correct post. This can then be used in Fusion 360 at the point of creating NC code. These post files are also all open source for editing if you wish to do so. When you have toolpaths ready to post out, you simply need to create an NC program item. In here, you can select which operations you want to post as well as the post processor to use. At this stage, you can also edit any post properties to configure it to your machine. For example, we can select which rotary axes are available on the machine. When you're ready, just select post and your NC code file will be created, which you can then put onto the machine's controller and you're ready to run. That was a brief introduction to post processors, which you hopefully now understand the need for and the basics of how to use them with Fusion 360. Thanks for watching.